Welcome to Missionary Flights in Fort Pierce, Florida. This morning we're going to go on a flight and you're going to follow us along as we go. We're going to go through the check-in and the weigh-in. We're going to go down and see what it's like to uh, go check in our passports and see Sarah and reservations. And then we're going to make our way out to the flight. On that flight we're going to go down to Haiti. We're going to see some missionaries that are on the ground there. We're going to see what our pilots do in the air. And then we're going to come on back to Fort Pierce. And this is what it looks like for most flights. Sometimes the flight is completely cargo. Sometimes it's mainly passengers. But today we're going to have a perfect mix of cargo and passengers so that you can see just what it's like to fly with missionary flights. Again, thank you so much for joining us. This is a fundraiser opportunity through this video for you to be able to give to the efforts of Missionary Flights International. We serve over 540 different missionary uh, organizations, families, and with the family, sometimes it's more than one family serving at the organization, and so we could double that. Those missionary organizations send teams, they send cargo, they send life-saving supplies down to Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and the Bahamas. Many of you will remember back in 2019 when Hurricane Dorian hit the northern Bahamas, we flew much-needed relief supplies to those areas. We helped out different families and communities, uh, we helped out churches, we helped out other nonprofits that needed the extra support uh, as they waited for cargo ships and containers to be able to make their way to the areas that were affected. We're hoping that soon those areas will be able to open up again. This pandemic that's swept around the world has not only kept us from being able to have our hangar banquet uh, at Missionary Flight so that people can come and eat underneath of the wings of our DC-3, but it's also slowed down the progress for us to be able to help out uh, with relief teams that were almost expected to go into the Bahamas during this time. The whole crew, just MFI, everyone, just thank you um, for just um, I know there's other organizations here, but uh, you guys stepped in first. You, you guys were here. Well, we're, we're doing our part, what we know how to do by flying people in, in packages. But, um, you know, there's not a lot that the guys from our team can come over and put on a new roof. You know, we don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Others are going to do that. Well, the, so. the, the good thing about it is um, it reminds me of the body of Christ. So we all have a part to do. You know, and, and you guys are standing the gap. You're bringing in the packages. You're bringing that in. Then there's another group that's going to do the roofs. Then there's another group that's another group that's going to do electrical. There's another group that's going to. So it, it, we all become one. And that's what creates the body of Christ. Um, each do their part. And that's awesome. Exactly. That, that's cool. Working together. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that you find some new information that maybe you didn't learn before. And if you've never been on a flight with us, I hope that you get just a small taste of what it's like to fly with missionary flights.
All right, and while passengers are preparing and getting themselves ready, um, checking in, getting their luggage weighed, body weights, going to Sarah, getting their passports checked, um, we are inspecting the plane and checking to make sure that it is ready right before flying down to Haiti. So normally what happens is the day before we do pre-departure uh, on the plane. And so that's whenever a more thorough inspection is done. Sometimes we have volunteers that help us to be able to do that. Um, but then on the morning of the flight, a final pre-departure is done as well, uh, where our first officer goes around and checks fuel, checks a few other things. Uh, and then we also have a mechanic that will come in in the morning and check things along with him. And uh, so anyways, today we will be flying on 500 Mike Fox because as you're about to see behind me, 200 Mike Fox is not quite ready to take to the skies. Prior to pushing the DC-3 out from the hangar, we've loaded cargo, we've processed passengers, uh, we've made sure everybody's had their potty break, and we've uh, just made sure that the flight process is going to go as smoothly as possible. Paperwork is complete, the pre-departure has been done by our first officer, our captain says we're good to go. And so our maintenance personnel push the plane out from the hangar uh, onto the ramp and from that point we'll bring out the passengers, hopefully we'll get to take a great group picture, and then we'll board the plane and prepare to take off for Haiti. Alright, well let's pray and get, yes, get on the road. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day, thank you for all that you're doing. Um, through all the mission teams and the work teams and the missionaries that are in around the world, even despite this pandemic, Lord, we know it's not uh, fun, it's not convenient, but you are working through it, and we pray yes. that you would work through us today yes. and um, help us be usable vessels for your service and just help uh, you to get all the glory and give yeah. us safety as we fly and time of fellowship in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Right. First pilot that's ever prayed. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we pray for all right. way that you know a team can do work that really flourishes is use MFI as a resource they're a phenomenal resource that helps you network so many things are being done in Haiti without other people knowing and so I think for people to become educated about what has been the most successful trips what has worked really well there are people that have been on the ground for years and MFI knows those people and so to be able to communicate education back to those groups to know what are the pitfalls people have run into and we have success as lives that we can follow in those footsteps. Just the other day, I came across my, my, my journal from my very first trip to Haiti back in 2013. I was reading it, and at, at the end of that journal, I, I, I wrote, today was my last day in Haiti, I, I hope I get to come back someday. Uh, and I, I remember when I stepped off of, of, of the ground in Haiti onto that onto the MFI plane, onto that, that step ladder, I wondered if I would ever be back uh, to Haiti. Uh, one year ago, right today, one year ago today, this was not on my radar. This was not on our radar at all. Um, and, and God, I'm here, obviously, and, and this was part of God's plan for, for all of eternity. But a year ago, I didn't know. 
uh, that, I that I would be coming and moving and, and serving in Haiti. And uh, I give God all the glory for that and all the praise because it's His story. Uh, I get to be part of that, which is, which is, a, which is a pleasure. It's an honor. Um, so people ask me, how's it going? And I say, you know what? We're not, we're not surprised by anything. We, we assumed and hoped it'd be really good, and it's really good. Uh, we assumed it'd be really hard, and it's really hard. Uh, but it's an honor to, to be, be part of this organization, and it's, it's an honor to serve God uh, in this part of, of His creation. And, uh, um, and yeah, MFI has been part of my journey and my story ever since the very beginning. So, um, and to God be the glory for that. The last few days have been really, uh, really trying uh, to have a, a hurricane just sit over, over uh, the island for almost two days. It's just a horrendous experience. You know, after the hurricane, we were fortunate, the Salvation Army and its facility were, were fortunate enough and blessed, I should say, to have been spared damage and flooding. And, and to us, that is just a sign that immediately thereafter, we were in a position to serve those who were affected. So uh, immediately after the, the, the waters receded on both ends of our facility, those who were making their way back to their, their homes to see if damage had occurred, on their way home, uh, we were able to, they were able to swing by the Salvation Army and we were able to provide them with something to eat, uh, some hydration. So we were forever grateful for Missionary Flights International for bringing in these goods to us. I really truly consider it a miracle. And in the midst of it happening, you guys are here like the week after the storm and the next few days after it. So given that you guys are able to make it there, I really and truly thanked God when I saw all of it because in the midst of everything that happened, you guys still were able to come. And when we went to the plane to move the stuff, I hopped on board to help move the stuff and it felt good because last time I was on a plane was when I was going away to play a game in another country for rugby. Um, but it just felt good and it felt like some sort of normalcy was in place and in spite of everything that's going on, there still is hope for us getting back up on our feet on the island. The help that we've received from missionary flights has been tremendous. Uh, they brought over a ton of parts for us and just overall helping out the community so much it's been a been a lifeline and you know we can't say enough about it it's you know tons of food tons of supplies and just uh, overall big help in getting a lot of family members out getting a lot of volunteers in and it's just the the tremendous support that we've received from them it's it's unbelievable and we just appreciate any help that we can get and anyone that can support them now and in the future is greatly appreciated.
As cargo is unloaded from the MFI plane, new cargo is brought on, and then at the same time, our passengers are brought over to customs. Uh, through customs, they're processed to go into the country, so Capation is one of the areas where we clear into the country. Uh, so all of that happens here before taking them on to Pion. Uh, some days the flight is direct to Capation, other days the flight is direct to Port-au-Prince. So just to give you an idea, the same process in a sense happens at either one of those airports. If we have passengers that are going to Pion, we first come here or we go to Port-au-Prince. Um, just so you guys also know, I want you to be able to kind of see uh, a lot of what happens with customs if they're going to Pion. Customs agents will end up coming out uh, to work with the plane, uh, to be able to work with the passengers that are bringing the supplies in. Uh, but again, everything's going to be able to serve Jesus, to be able to serve their communities. They want to give back. We want to have the ability for people to be able to share the light and love of Jesus Christ with those that they're dealing with. Our pilot, uh, Ryan Anders, is currently the first officer. So the first officer is in charge of taking care of the plane while the captain goes inside of the customs agency to finish filing the paperwork, uh, finish up the processes with the passengers. So at each step of the way, we're able to be there with you. Uh, we're able to be there with our passengers, but at the same time, we're running through all these other little uh, extra things that need to go on in order to make the flight happen. So while it's glorious to be in the air, while it's glorious to be able to load cargo and to be able to have that cargo get to the places where people are serving, uh, at the same time, uh, we've got all these little extra processes, things that are going on that you don't always get to see. Fueling the plane, just double checking, putting the rudder lock on, meeting with uh, those people that work with us in Capation so that they can see uh, the love and light of Jesus, those people that are working for us, uh, being able to work with and talk to that fuel person, uh, being able to see our passengers as they come to and fro, making sure their paperwork is complete, and being able to even celebrate things uh, with the customs agents. So I just went into the flight planning office where I usually file my flight plans, and there was a beautiful uh, arrangement there for, I thought it was for me, but I don't... Anyhow, it was a lot of balloons and um, table set up with a cake and some glasses. You might see a picture of this later. But I um, thought it was a welcome back party, but unfortunately it was somebody's birthday. So we went ahead and said birthday to uh, the flight planning lady that was in the office. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! As MFI passengers board the plane, some will get left in Pion, others with it will be traveling with us to Port-au-Prince and will be going there. But the majority that we've picked up in Capation today will follow along with us all the way back to Fort Pierce. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the flight. We are boarding passengers now, so oh, that actually means we need to get back on. It always helps to get the rudder lock first, so can't really do much if this thing's on. So we're gonna get that off while the pilot does the flight briefing and we'll be on our way. I tell people I feel like flying on MFI adds flavor to the missionary experience and to the you know small term missionary experience. If you want to feel like a missionary, I think that encounter that with MFI and fly down here and land on a grassy landing strip, come on. I, I mean, where else can you do that? I think it's off the charts. It just feels so much like a real missionary experience. And so I believe in short-term missions anyway. And to get someone coming down here is just going through the motions and maybe, you know, losing traction in their spiritual walk. And, and, <laughs> and then, the, you know, one of the pilots comes back and, you know, prays with it before, you know, you, 
go down and uh, or before you take off and and you know comes back and it's just a ministry the whole thing is a ministry i i just love it and um i i overheard one of the guys this last week when we landed because hey that was a really smooth landing it's like <laughs> i don't know what he, he was anticipating but i say hey it's a great plane you know um but i i'm just totally into it i think it adds to the missionary experience um and so i'm just humbled to get to you know um operate with you guys and to link arms with you guys and uh I just, I think it's wonderful. So I praise God for MFI. are good about asking but they know that when I get too high I get altitude sickness and so they either fly lower or else they put me on oxygen and they know that they remember that about me they come back and they check and make sure that I'm okay and I I've noticed that compassion with the um, all the staff that's on the airplane they'll ask you know if one of the children seems to be sick or is having a hard time they're really compassionate and they want to do anything they can for people uh, for the Missionary Flight International, uh, it's huge what you guys are doing because I couldn't get things from uh, the U.S. to come here or uh, we, we, there was nobody that would be in, in, in between us and the U.S. But Mission, Missionary Flight Inter International did that well for all missionaries in, in Haiti. And uh, I, I got a team that's trapped here the uh, uh, past couple, two months. And uh, um, I, it's you guys that helped me to get the, these teams out. And, and not only that, but bring materials and all of that. So really, you are like uh, that one that sending that gap and bridge that gap for us. I have a ministry called Psalm 139 Love along with my husband, Paul. And I gave my heart to Jesus when I was nine years old. I remember going down to the altar, um, praying for him to be my Lord and Savior. And nobody really explained the Holy Spirit to me at that time, or maybe if they did, I didn't really comprehend it. I just felt um, an electrical energy come into my body. And I literally heard in my spirit, I've called you to be a missionary. You're going to be doing missions. And I don't even know if I actually really knew what that was at the time. I must have somewhat knew. And I ran back and told my mom, I'm like, Mommy, I'm called to be a missionary and I'm going to do missions. And um, that's all I talked about as a child. And I would go to my church camp that I still go to every year. And at Missionary Day, it was a 10-day camp. And on Missions Day, the missionaries would get up and speak. And I literally, at 10, 11, 12 years old, would feel my heart, like what I would just pull out of my chest. Because I knew that's what I was supposed to do. So it still gives me teary up because it's like it was so powerful. So in 2008, I got my first chance to come on a trip. Um, I had been praying about where God wanted me to come, and I was blessed to be able to stay with John, John, and Christy of UCI. And I'm telling you, the moment I landed, I absolutely fell in love with, with Haiti. I fell in love with the people. Okay, guys, see ya. All right, see ya. See ya. Al, wave again one more time. Bye. Thank you, Jesus. Bye, wave bear. See you later.
Ryan Anders is the first officer at Missionary Flights. So part of his duties include when he lands on the ground, he's got to oversee the cargo deployment, uh, oversee the cargo that comes on, make sure that passengers are safe and secure. But at the same time, he makes sure that all the fuel that's put on board is exactly where it needs to be. And that's important. All right, and the plane almost has all the baggage loaded on it as we wait under the wing. Uh, it's not too bad, just a little bit of heat, uh, but luckily there's a good breeze going. Uh, I got Spirit Airlines creating a bunch of noise in the background, but other than that, baggage is getting loaded. We'll say bye to John Charles and all the other great ones that we love uh, here in Haiti. We'll take the missionaries that are flying with us today and head back to Fort Pierce. Hopefully everybody has a car waiting for them, but some of them will get to stay uh, with friends, family, and that sort of thing. Some might be staying in our hospitality center tonight. The options are endless because of donors and supporters like you. That's a really loud forklift that just went by me. Did everybody else hear that? All right, anyways, I just want to say that uh, thank you guys so much for joining. We're getting ready to go back on the plane. The baggage has been loaded and our missionaries are getting ready to board. So let's see if that plane door is gonna open up anytime soon and as always, I gotta run. MFI is a blessing and I want to thank all the MFI staff for what you're doing for us. Uh, thank you for uh, doing that, for willing to do that and we want to continue to pray for MFI people so that God continue to use them because that uh, affects us in a positive way. Every month, you know, we've got supplies. Even if it's something personal, I can quick Amazon order it and I can have it shipped and it can come. You know, I have that option as a missionary, which is super nice. Um, it's actually a huge benefit because I know that there are a lot of people that live places in the world that that's not going to be an option. And so I feel very spoiled and we feel very blessed to have MFI at our disposal. Um, but tons of, of stuff for our programs, you know, and for the mission that we're doing. So lots of resources are, are brought through the cargo flights monthly. Um, and if you guys didn't exist, it would be really challenging to get those how would we even do it, you know? Um. MFI has been uh, indispensable. Uh, they bring in our medical teams, they bring in our medical supplies. Uh, and I guess medically speaking, one of the most uh, eventful things for me, how MFI stood in the gap, I was in an explosion and I was burned from head to foot and MFI flew uh, 911 in here and uh, flew me back to the States for medical care. So uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't even know if I'd be here if it wasn't for MFI, okay? Uh, we just, uh, we, we really owe MFI our existence here. I love the way you guys um, do things like play with us, I'm like, um, it's the best thing. That's that's the word. The best thing. MFI is the best thing. Especially the the state of Haiti today. Uh, from one day to the next, you don't know where there is a demonstration. From one day to the next, you don't know where the country is going to be locked down. And that's when it becomes so important and and uh, vital for us to have 
a ministry like MFI. As we prepare to close up the hangar for the night and we've dropped off the passengers at customs, uh, everybody's on their way home. Our pilots just have a few more things to do before they wrap things up. So we're gonna clean up the plane. We're going to uh, put away all the mail that we received from Haiti. So those mail bags end up getting dropped off with Peggy at the front desk. If there's special packages, then we prepare them for pickup by FedEx, UPS, the US Mail Service, whoever is supposed to be receiving those packages, we're getting those prepped for the next time that they get picked up. But I just wanna say, you know what, thank you guys so much for joining us for this video. Uh, it really is a special moment that we have had to be able to take you along on the flight. And I really do hope that you will prayerfully consider how God will use you in order to support Missionary Flights International. Whether it's a one-time gift or recurring, your gift will make an impact for years to come. You can give online at www.missionaryflights.org. You can also write a check to Missionary Flights at 3170 Airman's Drive, Fort Pierce, Florida. The zip code is 34946. If you'd like to give any other way, maybe you have some stocks that you'd like to turn over or you'd like to put us in your will, whichever you choose, feel free to give Missionary Flights a call. Our phone number is 772-462-2395. Before this video ends, I'd like you to hear just a quick word from MFI President Joe Carabench. Normally, he has the opportunity to go to banquets and present at your churches, but sadly, we haven't been able to do that this year. And so I'd like for you just to hear his heart as he presents the last message from Missionary Flights. Well, this year has certainly been different. Uh, we have missed you. My wife and I have uh, usually gone on a tour of the Midwest and the Northern States to do banquets and visit with all of you and, and see you uh, maybe on an annual basis. But last year we had Hurricane Dorian come through here and our former president, uh, President Emeritus Dick Snook came and uh, saw all of you and we did some fundraising. Uh, but, you know, things are different now. Uh, but I do want to thank each and every one of you for your faithful uh, prayers and your support over the years, and especially this last year. Things are different. It's been challenging, challenging for MFI, challenging for our missions. You know, they've been struggling, uh, especially down on that island of Hispaniola, Haiti, the Dominican. They've got um, supplies that they need, and we've been able to continue bringing those, but they haven't had the, the work teams come in as they usually do to help their, their mission work. And so uh, some people are returning now, things have opened up a bit, um, but it's still challenging. Uh, so we're continuing to work. Uh, also for the Bahamas, they got hit with a double whammy. Uh, last year with Hurricane Dorian came in and wiped out uh, the Abacos and Freeport. We helped out with that, bringing lots of supplies and we were planning to bring teams, but now with COVID, they can't go. Uh, the Bahamas just this month finally allowed people to come in and not be quarantined for two weeks. And so there's uh, things opening up there, but we hope to uh, bring people in, teams to rebuild the Bahamas, but we'll see what the, what happens. Uh, maybe after the holidays, I think people will, will, will be doing that. Um, but I'm so glad that you've been able to join us for this virtual flight and see uh, what's been going on and you're able to hear from some of the missions that we help and how they appreciate us. It's been great. But I'm thankful that we have a sovereign God that loves us and that was not surprised at all by anything that's happening this year or will happen. And I pray that you will stay safe and that your walk with the Lord will actually be closer tomorrow than it is today.